you're lonely And save for you that the sun don't shine Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London Show you something and make you change your mind Hey there friends, how's it going today? David Potts with Song Notes here, and today we're looking at Streets of London by Ralph McTell, 1969, an amazingly beautiful fingerstyle ballad. Now many of you have requested this one year after year. It keeps coming in, and I've been waiting for the right time, and that time has finally come. So I'll teach you how to finger pick it, just like Ralph McTell does. I'm going to save that, though, mainly for the back half of this lesson, because I want to start off just giving you a quick lay of the land, talk about the intro, the verse, the chorus, the chords that are used, the progressions and everything. I'll show you how to actually strum things, which is a great way to just make your way through the song beginning to end, get used to things. You can start singing along, start practicing the chord shapes, the transitions, all that stuff, so that when you get to the finger style, you already know the order of the chords, you already know how to play the chords, and you're sort of kind of moving it at half speed or almost full speed so you can hit the finger style ground running. Okay, so first up, looking at the chords here, we have a C, a C in the G, then A minor, then E minor, right? F, I'll talk about that in a second, to C, F again, then to G, okay? And the second half of the verse is gonna use the exact same chords except for the last two are slightly different, right? We're gonna start with our C, U, G, no pride, A minor held loosely, E minor his side, F, yesterday's C paper, telling G, yesterday's news. So notice how uh, line two ends with an F to a G, Okay, the four to the five, and line four of every verse, every single verse follows this pattern, is gonna end with a G down to a C, right? The five to the one, okay? Everything else is the same, okay? So as far as how to play these chords, it's all standard stuff. If you need help, if you're totally new to these chords, I have a whole beginner chord guide on my website. It'll help you out. The one I wanna call out though is the F. If we're doing a strummed version, you know, you could just use, uh, you could bar all six strings if you want. You're always able to do that. I tend to prefer this lazier version where I'm just doing the middle four strings, third, third, second, first, okay? works really well for strumming. And then you also, this sets your thumb up for later in the finger style, we're gonna do this wrapped thumb thing where this this thumb is actually gonna play this F note right here on the first fret of the thickest string, okay? So you don't have to do that if you're doing this lazy version, but it sets your thumb up for kind of where it needs to be. So it's a nice little version you can do there. So uh, let's just do a simple strum. If we were to do a down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. Every time you see a chord here, you're gonna do that pattern one time. Okay, so four beats, okay? So it would sound like this, right? A one, two, three, four. Have you seen the old man in a closed down market kicking up the papers with his worn out shoes? In his eyes, you see no pride, hand held loosely at his side. Yesterday's paper telling yesterday's news. And hang on C for an extra measure there. And now we're going to get to the chorus of this song. Now again, the second half of the chorus is what we just played, right? That's the most recognizable part. Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London. Show you something to make you change your mind. Okay, isn't it cool we've already learned that? And that's what's gonna be using that very iconic um, last couple lines there of each chorus. But it's the first part of the chorus which is uh, in our way, we have to learn it. And this is probably the trickiest part of the song, but you can do it, it's not that hard, I believe in you here. So we're gonna start off with an F, right? So how can you tell me to an E minor? And then we're gonna have this sequence where we're gonna go through the chords quickly, okay? You're lonely and safe for you that the sun don't shine. Okay, so what's going on there? So again, for that F at the beginning of line one, if we're just doing a strummed version, just do the lazy F or whatever version of F you want, right? How can you tell me? E minor, standard stuff. Now this part, this is basically a walk down. The bass note to these chords, 
Okay, we're gonna go from our C bass note to our B bass note to our A bass note to our G bass note and then an F sharp. That's a nice sort of standard thing there. Now everything else that's happening are just kind of like filler strums. Now, if you were to approach and look at the chords that are needed here, right? The C, we already know. The G over B, basically think of that as, I think of it as just the second fret on the fifth string and then the open uh, fourth, third, and second string. Okay? And then the A minor, regular A minor. Now the A minor over G, I like to use my ring finger. You just sort of pick your ring finger up and put it down here, but you keep these two fingers where they normally would be, okay? You also could use your pinky, right? But I find it easier just to use this sort of uh, ring finger. Technically, this makes it an A minor seven, but don't worry about the naming technicalities. And I say that because you're introducing this G note, right? Uh, but it's an A minor seven with a G bass note, or you could just call it a C with a G bass note. But again, don't worry about the names. My point here is C, G over B, A minor, A minor over G. And then you're gonna keep your index finger where it is, right? Your middle finger is gonna hop to the second fret of the low E string, and your ring finger is gonna get to the second fret of the third string. And we're gonna get this D7 with an F sharp bass note, okay? Now this chord technically does not belong to the key of C as far as the, the, the notes that this chord's built with, it has an F sharp. F sharp is not in the C major scale, right? So this is not a diatonic chord, which is again, is a theory term. But what this is gonna do is it's gonna make, it's kinda gonna build up the tension because we're gonna bring this note up a half step to the G. Okay, so that whole thing in sequence here, right? Uh, so how can you tell me your love? And say for you that the sun don't shine. Okay? Now you notice when I did the G over B, I actually kept my index finger here. You're allowed to do that. Okay? Now, that part is tricky because that fast moving walk down and you have the weird chord right here, right? But again, you're gonna wanna get comfortable with that before you even attempt the finger picking, okay? And then you just, uh, let me just do a full playthrough of the chorus here and um, we'll, we'll see how it sounds, okay? So, how can you tell me you're lonely and say for you that the sun don't shine? Okay, and the last two lines we already know. Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London and show you something to make you change your mind. Okay, and that's all you need for the entire song. Basically, you're gonna go back to the verse, then to another chorus, then to another verse, another chorus, and one last verse, and then the chorus one more time. But that's basically what you'll need uh, to get started with this song. And I recommend if you get the song sheet especially, get the song sheet, learn these chords, get comfortable with things, and just practice strumming your way through it, right? It's gonna be a little bit choppy at first. You're gonna notice those tricky parts, but then you'll be in good shape when you wanna learn the finger style. So now let's learn the finger style, and we're gonna start off by learning the intro. Now again, this is the intro that is used um, this same sequence of chords in the intro is used in the second half of every verse and the second half of every chorus. So learning this finger picking sequence, you can use that same sequence when you're singing the verse and singing the chorus, okay? Now here's the deal. This is gonna be played Travis style, which means that our thumb is gonna be bouncing between bass notes. But before we get to that thumb stuff, we're gonna look at the melody. This is the part you would hum, right? We're gonna combine that melody with the bass notes we learn later on. Okay, but let's learn the melody first because uh, it's gonna get easier to do it that way as, a, as opposed to learning the bass notes and the melody at the same time. Okay, so the green notes here highlighted are the melody that is used in this section, okay? 
And again, I might have simplified a few things, but it's, it's, it's mainly gonna get you there. It's gonna sound like Streets of London. Now I have the chord shapes written in there as well because that kind of gives you a clue on where your fretting hand should be positioned when you're playing this, right? So you wouldn't necessarily wanna do just Okay, I was just playing the melody notes there by themselves, but my left hand wasn't in any chord context. I was kind of just hitting random notes. I recommend in general, put your fretting hand into the chord shapes that these notes are coming from. It's just gonna make things way easier for you because as you get into strumming your finger style, your, your hand is already making that chord shape and it's already setting you up for success. So if you can, put your hand in the chord shapes, it's shown on the one count, right? And then we just go through these melody notes. Let's do the first couple measures here, right? Okay, just hopping from the thinnest string, open, the first string, uh, first fret of the second string, and then to the G. Okay, I'm using my ring finger down here. It's important for the finger style. I recommend doing this. So your pinky is gonna do third fret on the high E string, come off of that high E string. We're gonna play it open, and then third fret of the second string, okay? So the first two measures. That might be tricky at first, getting your pinky to play along, but you're gonna wanna put in the practice. It'll eventually, it will listen to you and do what you're telling it to do, right? And to the A minor, second, second string, first fret is our melody note, but we're gonna put our pinky down, right? On that third fret of the second string, and then the E minor, okay? Open to first to open to third fret, right? Those first three notes are on the high E string, and then the third fret, is that same third fret note we've already played in the previous two measures. So the um, first four measures total, if you just did the melody and you did the chord too, right? Okay, I doubled up that A minor note. Okay, now the second line, we're gonna play an F whether you do a wrapped thumb F, or even if you just do the middle four strings, you basically wanna strum up to the third string. Take your second string finger off, put it back down. And to a second uh, measure there is a C, right? Just the second and third string. G, we're gonna walk it up to the C. So in this second line here, notice how for the F and for the G, we're gonna strum, we're all, the, the melody note's gonna be on the third string, okay? And we're not gonna strum the full chord at that point. We're just gonna sort of strum all the notes that are underneath the melody note, literally on the page, right? <laughs> So the whole thing would sound like this, right? And instead of strumming the chords, what I'm gonna do is use my thumb just to pluck the bass note of each chord, and my index finger is gonna do the melody. This is something you're gonna to wanna to be able to do fluently, right? So what that's teaching us, number one, the melody itself. It's also teaching our left hand, our fretting hand, which chord shapes to be in. But it's also teaching our thumb to hit those bass notes of each chord, right? Now it might seem like a lot, but it's only gonna get harder when we bring in the alternating bass note, okay? So what I just did is something I recommend spending time with. Again, give it the time. It may take a few days, but it'll start feeling a bit more something like you can do confidently, right? That's what you wanna do is put in that time to get there. Okay, now let's look at how to add the alternating bass notes. So this assumes you have the melody that I just taught you under your belt, okay? The main idea here is we're gonna play two different notes for every chord, our, our, our thumb, our right thumb if you're right-handed, 
um, is going to be bouncing between on the one, two, three, four beats, okay? Those quarter notes, right? Now for the C, I'm always doing it between fifth and fourth string, okay? For the G, sixth and fourth string. You kind of just have to memorize this stuff, right? A minor is the fifth and fourth string again. And then E minor is sixth and fourth string. I'm staying on each one for a, a while. Um, in the tab, I move on a bit quicker, but I just want to sort of walk you through things. The F, this is where you're gonna do the wrap thumb, right? I'm doing between sixth and fourth string as well. If you can't do the wrap thumb, just do the middle four strings and do strings five and four for the F, okay? It's gonna work just fine. And then the C again, and then the G, once you learn them all, it gets a bit easier. Okay, now what I would recommend, I'm gonna play it from beginning to end here. I'm gonna follow the tab exactly with just my thumb. Okay, so. Spend time going over that. You could actually sing along, and it's a great way to actually bring in parts of the melody, but it's happening with your voice and not your index finger, right? Um, that I take you by the hand and walk you through the streets of London. I'll show you something to make you change your mind. Okay, be able to do that fluently. I'm, I'm walking through it kind of relatively quickly here. When you practice this, it's gonna take a while to get comfortable with it, but when you're ready, you can combine the melody we already learned and those bass notes. Now, uh, one trick when you're getting started with this, bring in the first melody note of each measure only but do all the bass notes. That would sound like this. Okay, and sort of starting to bring in the melody. You're starting it off, but you're, you're not overdoing it in every measure, okay? The one thing I wanna call out here, which is tricky, number one is that E minor hammer on. Hammer on means you're gonna pluck it open and then you're gonna put your index finger down and you're not gonna pluck it with your picking hand when you put your index finger down. Okay, so the melody notes in the E minor measure, it's four notes total, but you're only gonna pluck the string three times. That second note is coming from a hammer on. Okay, and then the next measure, that F in measure five, the melody note technically, if you listen to what Ralph McTell plays, it doesn't happen on the one count, it happens just after the one count. And that might seem hard, but I actually think it's, it, in a way it's easier to play it that way because it gives you an extra eighth note to get your fingers ready to go. Okay. Let me play it again here. Now, uh, Ralph McTell does a few things that are slightly different in his recording. He, the, the timing is a bit different here and there. I'm not gonna mess with those fine details here. Learn this, listen to his version more and more, and you can pick out some of those things. I just wanna call that out there. Now, when it comes to playing the verse and the chorus, a lot of what I already showed you, those same principles are gonna apply. And again, those melody notes that I, I just taught you for the, for the intro, and the bass as well. It's gonna be used in the second half of the verse and the second half of the chorus. So we're well on our way, but here's the thing. When you're singing, you might find it hard to do this complex Travis picking, okay? So what I have written up for my tabs for the verse and for the chorus, I've simplified the melody a little bit. I've kind of taken out about one of the notes, meaning if you look at it on the page, you're gonna notice there's two melody notes in each measure. It's gonna sound like this if you do the verse. So 
I trust that you hear that that was a bit more sparse, right? A, there was a bit more space in there. And the idea is because you're singing, uh, I wanna just make it a little bit easier on your picking hand. Now, you might find that actually doing the full melody that I have tabbed down on page four, where it's three notes for every measure. Maybe it's easier for you to sing like that. If that's the case, by all means, play the more complicated version, right? But I wanna show you this simple version that I have tabbed out, right, that I just played, um, because it, it might be an extra layer of comfort and helpfulness for you, just by giving you something a bit more simple to do. Now let's look at the chorus though, because this is the one last tricky part. We already looked at how to did, do this earlier in the, in the lesson, but uh, this is a bit, this brings in some different chord shapes subtly and some different considerations. So, so how can, let me play it for you here, so. So again, it's the first two lines, which are gonna be the tricky part here. Let's look at those really quick. Now here, when you talk about the F, if you wanna get the true melody here, you're gonna see that it's this, um, you're gonna to need to get the thinnest string, first fret. Okay, so I'm doing a barred F, because if you wrap, if you do the wrapped F, it's really hard. You, you can technically do it. You can bar the thinnest two strings and then do the wrapped F, but I can't, I just can't reliably do that comfortably. So I just, I just bar it for this one chord because I want this note, right? How can you tell me? Then we go to an E minor, right? And you're gonna bring your pinky here for the C. Now the walk down. So here, what am I doing here? Number one, it's a C with our pinky on the third fret of the thinnest string. Okay, that's new. Now the G over B, what I'm also doing is putting my index finger on the first fret of the thinnest string. Okay, then the A minor, normal. Put your ring finger down here, but then you're gonna bring your pinky on the third fret of the second string, right? And the idea is you want this walk down to be heard on the thinnest two strings. And then we get to the F sharp, uh, the D7 over F sharp. Okay, and that's all sort of stuff we've already played before, what I just showed you there. So, this whole part. So, how can you tell me you're lonely and say for you that the sun don't shine? Let me take you through my hand and wait you through the streets of London. <laughs> it's hard to sing, y'all, I, I, I gotta say. Uh, doing the finger style stuff is incredibly tricky while singing. I can sort of hardly do it half, I can do it halfway, half the time, and it sounds great. But the other half, not that great. So again, for the verse and the chorus, I do have the melody notes written up on page four of my song sheet if you wanna reference this. Again, a lot of it for the verse is matches what you already did in the intro. So not much of it is that new there, but it does have the lyrics above for context. For the chorus especially, that's where things get a bit uh, new, right? That first part of the chorus, right? So how can you tell me your love? And say for you that the sun don't shine. Second half of the chorus is just like the intro. So that's what you're gonna need to play this song, Streets of London. Um, check out my website, songnotes.net. I have some zoomed in videos that loop over the intro, the verse, and the chorus as I have them tabbed out. If you just want a zoomed in version with tabs on screen, no talking for you to reference. 
And then I have a sort of playthrough where I'm going to sort of do a mixed version of strumming and finger style if you want to hear how I put this together based on my skill level. This is really hard to sing and finger pick at the same time, so sometimes I'll mix the two different things together, the strumming and the finger style, that is. But good luck with it. Um, I hope you have some fun with this one. It's a beautifully dear song. It, it reminds me of John Prine's Hello in There. I mean, the themes are kind of like, I never have been reminded of Hello in There so much, right? Um, so if you haven't heard Hello in There by John Prine, it's a beautifully... It's a beautiful song. It's kind of sad, but it, I mean, it hits in the same themes as this, right? And I think there is some, um, I don't want to say hope, but it just, it, it reminds you of the warmth of humanity. And, and in a way, there is something reassuring about that. Anyhow, I'll leave it to you all now. Uh, have a good one. Remember to check out my website, songnotes.net, for all the other resources I have for this song and for Travis Picking in general. And I'll see you in the next lesson. Until then, take care, my friends. Bye-bye.